not just wanted to use cyber <laughs> in my title. Um, first off, uh, my name is Alexander Jäger. Um, I work as an incident responder for BASF. However, I'm not representing BASF, so I'm here on my own, um, just presenting my ideas um, and stuff um, I came up with um, working for FIRST. So FIRST, a uh, form of incident response teams. So let's see, or let's give some disclaimers. Um, some things I mentioned are only ideas. Um, some things can be easily implemented using the API. Um, some things are already available as a talk. Some things are already available. And of course, almost everything can be done with another tool, um, can be done in a better way with other tools. I don't care. I just <laughs> did stuff. <laughs> um, okay, that's um, so far. So be peaceful. So let's see how, how MISP worked in the past. Um, it was good for exchanging IOCs um, for malware. Um, it was good for person-to-person -person communication. Um, and I think two or three years ago, it started to work between organizations as well. Um, pretty good. But if you are an individual trying to put all your stuff into your MISP, um, that might not scale. Um, so you don't want to add stuff manually because you might end up like Lisa sitting in front of her books. Um, and if you do so for half a year, you might end up like that. <laughs> um, and you don't want to do that. Um, so what's, what's the goal? Um, the goal for, for me, for you guys, is to speed up your incident response process. Um, reduce stupid and boring work steps um, so that people in your SOC will not quit their jobs because they do monkey work. Um, and of course you want to work in a team, so you want to leverage stuff that others in your team or in other organizations do. Um, so you want this. Um, so how can you use MISP in your cyber team? Um, let's assume you have, of course, different persons working on the same case event. Um, so you have the um, hurdle of a handover. You need to ensure stuff is, is documented. Um, you want to auto-enrich data. Um, I think Alexandre talked about it, this uh, before a little bit. Um, in my case, um, I used Active Directory as an example. Um, and you want to automatically add events to your MISP instance. Um, and you, of course, only want to focus on, on high critical stuff. So you want to be like these geniuses. So let's see the example of, of the Active Directory. Um, what could be the benefits? Um, you can have correlations between machines. So you can see this machine was infected a year ago already. Um, you can have correlations on user base. So user A is using different machines. Um, you can identify high critical systems. Um, if that data is, of course, available in your Active Directory. Um, and you can use, for example, tags based on the location of your system to get trends in what area of your environment you have more infections. Um, that can be easily done using a simple Python script. So I think I hacked that in about four or five hours, um, just adding new um, attributes to an event based on a host name. Um, and it really adds value. Um, but of course, it, it limits um, you based on the data you have in your Active Directory. So shit in, shit out. Um, but if you have the data available, it can help your, um, your MISP data dramatically. Um, so that's me creating that script. Um, another example um, I created, I think, half a year ago, um, is an integration with MISP, uh, with, with FireEye, sorry. So FireEye has several sensors, which enables you to detect stuff in your network or in your parameter. 
Um, what I wanted to achieve is I wanted to have per fire eye event one misp event. Um, stuff that you can um, extract from these events is, for example, source and destination IP, um, destination port, C2s, you can get malware names, um, and this tool is, is available already on GitHub. Um, so you just redirect your FireEye appliance to push all the events to web server, um, and that web server takes all the events and adds it via um, MISP API to MISP. Um, but a new version will come up, I think, next week, which do does a lot more than um, at the moment, so a lot of correlation stuff um, to deduplicate. Um, but it already works in production, and it's a good thing. Um, but be careful. If you do that, you will end up with maybe thousands of events. Um, so be sure you have enough people to, to follow up on that stuff. Um, and now, how can we use MISP in your cyber team? So let's assume your cyber defense um, organization has, of course, tier zero um, automatic stuff. You have some kind of SOC, which is outsourced um, for the real low-hanging fruits. You have internal SOC analysts, and you have your incident response team. Genius at work. Um, if you start with, with tier, tier zero, um, you could add stuff like which host is affected, what is the location of the system. Um, you can add stuff like the malware is used, the known bad destination, and also threat rating based on sensors. So most sensors will give you an idea how critical something is. So if the malware name contains APT, you might want to increase um, the threat level. But you already have a good basic set of information then. Next, what can your tier, zero, tier one do? Um, they can check if it's false positive. So if there is the IP 8888 in there, it might be false positive. Or check the warning list of MISP uh, against the um, information provided by your automated stuff. <laughs> um, they can also start triaging for malware samples using virus total or using internal capabilities if you have an incident response tool on your endpoints. Um, and last but not least is they can use templates. Um, it's only a small feature, but if you use it, it's very powerful. Because using the templates, you can force your SOC or whatever, whoever is working on it, to provide the information you expect from them. So for example, if they start working on something, they need to provide a case number in your ticketing system. So make it a template. Um, or they need to provide certain tags. Um, they need to provide the analyst name, kind of stuff. So um, use templates to force people um, providing the information you expect them to provide. Because it makes it easier in the, in the later state of your incident response process. Your internal SOC could then correlate that stuff with other events. So have you seen that before? Has it been analyzed already? then you might just drop it. Um, they can add business context, saying, okay, this is high critical system, or I know this is board member of my organization, um, and then increase or decrease the priority, um, and of course, adding tags. So for example, it was a phishing case, um, it has been blocked, it has been detected by system X, Y, Z. Um, so just enrich the data you have already in place. And of course, upload samples to Sandbox, like Cuckoo or other software in your organization, um, and adding these results in your MISP again. So for example, the Sandbox might reveal another C2 address um, or that stuff the Sandbox reveals. If you have that kind of information already in hand, it's pretty cool to then start your real incident response process because you don't start from zero. You have already a good kind of information available. 
Um, you could then start with manual investigation. Um, you can share IOCs um, because the other um, areas might not be empowered to share information. Um, you can also do reverse engineering, manual reverse engineering of samples, um, post-mortem forensics, um, and one of the things I discovered in the last few, uh, let's say, weeks is give strategic advice. Because if you have a good amount of events in your MISC that has tags, that has locations, you could, have, for example, give the advice, okay, we have seen an increase of uh, fishing nails in that area, in that country. Um, we might spend some money on awareness in that specific country or even identify a user who needs special training. Um, these kind of strategic advices um, are then a low-hanging fruit because you have the data available. And if you do all that kind of stuff, your boss will love you. Like, excellent. Because you just, these are all low hanging fruits. Some ideas. Um, if, you, if you consider yourself an analyst, what is the most used tool for you? It's the browser. You have opened it almost the entire day. Um, so I thought it would be very, very nice to have a browser plugin for this. Um, so that you just can do right click and search a MISP and just make it red or yellow if you have that information or not. Um, I think would help a lot and shouldn't be that hard to, to implement. So even March can do that. So having said that, um, thank you for your attention. Um, if you have any questions or ideas, feel free to, to ask. Um, I think, from my perspective, MISP is good to, um, to be integrated in the workflow of your cyber defense strategy. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>